not only for the people's livelihoods, but also for an already shaky economy costing billions of dollars a week. In Kansas, though, 2,000 workers are now, their jobs, they're gone. General Motors announced massive layoffs as a result of this UAW strike. But it's not just Kansas where pink slips have been handed out. Automakers, Stellantis, uh, you know, the Chrysler people, announced layoffs in Ohio and Indiana, while Ford let 600 workers go in Detroit. Meanwhile, tech workers at Infinity and Massapequa, New York, representing UAW, the local uh, 259, walked off the job this morning, part of their plan that they said they were going to do spontaneously across the country. They claim their employer has retaliated against them for, non, or for union activity and refuses to meet with them at the bargaining table. Well, joining me now to discuss, Tony Toddy, president of the UAW Local 14 Union. Tony, appreciate you being here. Um, my question here is, you guys are making some demands for increased salaries. The problem is, is right now the automakers, the, the prices for a car are so high, where is this money going to come from with record low profits on the backs of a number of initiatives like the EVs. Well, we thank you for having us. I'm live here from the strike line uh, at Jeep, and this is having a ripple effect. Uh, you you look at even here in, in Toledo, uh, the other Stellantis facility is uh, facing some departments uh, going down, and they're going to be on strike pay. We have Ford Broncos as we speak right now showing up to show solidarity. Uh, for that transition to EV, the, the federal government's helping through the Inflation Reduction Act to offset some of that. But this is a for-profit company and in industry, mm -hmm. and uh, they're getting in, and they want to be a part of EV uh, so they could see the profits on the other side of it. When you look at the horse and carriage, right, uh, the, the smart one said, hey, we're going to go over to the automobile because that's where the profits are going to go. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, these corporations will be able to provide not only – Oh, it fell down because of the wind. No Not problem. only investments into the uh, the future uh, through EV, but they can uh, pay their workers that put them in this profitable position a fair wage. Well, you know, we talk about the fair wage, and look, I would love every worker to be paid as much as possible, but what the demands are currently sitting at on the table is $8.5 billion more annually just in payroll, and the, 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 these companies are not posting that level of profit to, 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 to dole out. Well, when you look at CEO compensation, right, Mary Barra, our General Motors CEO, I represent the General Motors facility here in mm -hmm. town, her, prop, her, her income went up 36% in the last four years. Uh, she makes $29 million a year. You know, these, these CEOs sit on each other's boards and they give each other these raises uh, amongst themselves. And when it comes to the shareholder, they do stock buybacks. But what about the workers that stand here be, behind me uh, that... Uh, you know, gave everything uh, six weeks after COVID hit. We were back in the facilities making these things because you can't make a Jeep or a transmission from home. Uh, we're not asking anything that they can't afford. And I understand the Ford CEO said, oh, they want 300 bucks an hour. That's not reality. When, when they calculated it, they looked at all of our demands that we brought to the table. Obviously, through negotiations, you whittle that down. Mm -hmm. uh, but to have these temporary employees in here like indentured servants, or well, indentured I, servitude, it's not right. I, I don't think that's a, that's a fair... I mean, look, if you if you divided up the CEO's entire salary between all the workers amongst the plant, we did the math, it comes out to about $100 each per year for every employee. But the other thing, too, is... And this is something that's a little confusing to me. The UAW has like a hundred and or sorry, eight hundred and twenty-five million dollars in its strike fund, but they're only paying mm -hmm. the workers five hundred dollars a week to strike. Why don't you guys give them the salary that you're asking the automakers to pay with your huge strike fund? That's not how this is set up, and I mean that's Clearly. you know a bit of semantics, but uh, you know that that's we put that aside so we can weather the storm to get a good contract. That's what this is. So. Um, you know, th that's that's cute, but that's not what that's for. That's for well, us you're asking to get the automakers to pay it. Why can't you guys pay it in the short term? Because that's not what that's that's just not reality. Uh, what we ask I the know. employers to do is take. Well, what we're asking for is, is reality. Uh, these corporations make look at Stellantis behind me. Twelve billion dollars a year in six months. Uh, and they're doing that from hiring in temporary employees at 15 bucks an hour and keeping them at that wage for uh, seven years, you know, is the worst offense that I heard out here. Uh, you know, that's seven years of not being able to put into a 401k. That's seven years of not receiving the big profit sharing checks that Mary Barris says all her employees yeah. get, but they don't. 
you know, well, our, our contract's been out of whack ever since yeah. uh, the bankruptcy. And, and these companies can afford to, to pony so, up at the table. Tony, I, look, I, I, I sympathize with you. I really do. I, I want to get these workers paid as much as possible. But I, I just I don't think the math works out. But I do appreciate you taking the time to join us, sir. Thank you for having me. All right.